Hello everyone and welcome to episode 22 of the Idle Game Maker course. First of all, I want to apologize for the recent lack of uploads. I have been busy renovating my room a little bit, along with a few other things of course. However, I'll try my best to get back to releasing an episode every one to two weeks. With that said, in this episode we are going to cover how to implement this snazzy looking news sticker right here, which displays some news which are happening in, inside your game world. You can also get really creative with the messages that it displays because all of these messages here accept text effects. And this new sticker which we will implement shows some new piece of information every 10 seconds. However, there are endless ways to customize it. Without further ado, let's begin the tutorial. Now before we begin coding, implementing this feature has a little bit of nuance to it as well as a fair bit of CSS. So to make sure that you don't get lost in the process, let's separate the implementation process into individual steps. With step 1, we will need to make space for a new layout box under the store using CSS which will contain the log. Which which is basically just a console for messages. Then step two will involve creating the new layout box, setting its new dimensions and positioning it properly. Step three, which will be optional, is styling the new layout box to make it pretty. Now you can go as wild and artsy as you want to in this step, but in this tutorial we'll be making it look like the one you see right here. And during this step you will also learn quite a bit about styling elements. With step four, we'll have finished setting up the layout box which contains the log. And this means that we will then need some resource which acts as a timer and every 10 seconds that pass the resource picks a random number between 1 to n where n is your number of messages then based on what number it generated the corresponding message will get shown in the new sticker and yeah that's pretty much it one more thing i'd like to add is that you can make the process that decides which message gets picked on the new sticker a lot more sophisticated and you could for example have it scale with your progression with if statements now if what i said didn't make much sense don't worry i will go over each step in detail in this video okay and now with the process explained let's finally get to coding let's begin with step one making space for our new sticker now now I want it to be under my entire store, which means that inside of our code we will need to find the CSS section and select the store box like so. So hashtag box dash store and let's move it 20% of the screen's height away from the bottom. Now after we updated our code it should look something like this which I'm happy with. And now step two will be creating a new layout box then positioning it right around here below the store box. Now this new box will need to have a width of 40% since that's how much of the screen width the store box covers. It will then need to have a height of 20%, right? Since that's how far away from the bottom we move the store box to make space for this new box that we are going to create. So inside of our code, let's quickly go into our layout section and under the store, let's create a new box and call it log box. And Let's also have it contain the log, right? This means that inside of this box, log messages will be shown. Then let's copy and paste the theme key of this box and move up into our CSS section. And let's once again select it with hashtag box dash log box. And let's give it a width of 40%, right? As I explained previously, and a height of 20%. Okay, so now after I updated my game, the layout box has been created. However, it's in the completely wrong position. And this is because the default position of new layout boxes that you create in Idle Game Maker have a default position in the top left corner of the screen, as can be seen here. So our goal right now is to move this box which we created into right here. And how would we actually go about doing that? Well, let's first note that the store box has a height of 80% of the screen's height. And this means that we can move this newly created box 80% of the screen's height away from the top which means we are going to use the top property 80% so let's go inside of our code and add the top property with a value of 80% now we can see that our box has been moved to the bottom left corner however we still need to move it a bit to the left now to figure out how much we need to move it we need to figure out the width of this area right here now the store box covers 40 percent of the screen's width so this is 40 percent thus 
this means that this should be 60%. So we just need to move our box 60% away from the left side of the screen. Inside of our code, let's also add the left 60% property. And now after we save our code, our log box is in the proper position and step two is officially complete. We can now move on to step three and that is making this box look nice. Now, whenever you want to style some kind of element in your game with CSS, but don't quite know where to begin, a useful trick is right clicking the element you want to style and then clicking inspect element and playing around with the values and options that you have in here. And don't worry, any changes you make here are temporary and the game will quickly revert back to normal after refreshing the page. However, you can very easily implement the changes into your CSS code to make them permanent. Now, of course, you might just be thinking I'm crazy for ho hoping you'll understand everything inside of this inspect element window. However, you can basically read about anything that you see inside of this inspect element window on this website. It's called W3Schools and it has tutorials for many programming languages, CSS included. Now, of course, I will also link this website in the description, but let's say that inside of this inspect element window, we, for example, I don't know, change the box class, right? This class is assigned to every single box in our game. And we change the padding to be, for example, you know, 30 pixels. Well, we see that something happened. Well, why did this happen? Well, let's go into this website and search for CSS padding. And here we can see that padding is used to create space around an element's content inside of any defined borders. Aha, so when we change the padding property, it added some space around an element's content. So basically it added 40 pixels of pure space around every single box in our game and so now we have learned something new and this brings me to my next point is to play around with a lot of the values you see here see what happens and then find out why it happened by referring to this website and this is actually how i learn code with css with idle game maker and this will really help you when in the future you want to style something yourself but don't quite know how to give this challenge a go and i'll see you in just a second all right, so hopefully you played around with the settings a little bit, but now I'll actually style this box myself. Now, the first thing I like to change about our box is to change the smooth edges to not be smooth at all. And the way we do that is by changing the border radius of the dot box bit class, which is automatically assigned to any kind of box which contains the log. So when we just turn it to zero, you can see that now the corners are sharp. So let's quickly get to our CSS code and add the box bit class and change it for the radius to be zero pixels. Now, the next thing I like to add is a background picture for our log because right now it's looking pretty bland. And the way we do that is by going into the log ID itself because the log is only a part of the log box and we need to change the background of the log itself. And the way we do that is by adding a background image property with a URL of some kind of image which you will need to find on the internet and upload it to file garden i've already found mine which is right here and i believe you also need to add these apostrophes inside of the url and now our log should have an image all right so our box is still not looking the best however it's off to a good start and now we could leave it like this however i think what would look even better is if there was a black gradient on top of this image which we have provided so the way we do that is just by adding the linear gradient property into our background image and i'm just going to copy and paste it here to speed things up however if you want to learn about how this works you can of course read about it in the website which i told you about a few minutes ago all right and now that there is a black gradient on top of our little new sticker here i think i'm happy with how it looks now of course i could just keep styling it on and on however we'd just be here forever so let's now move on to actually implementing the logging system of the new sticker now in order to make our new sticker functional and actually show some kind of well news or messages we first need to create a new resource right we need to head over to the resources section and i'm going to name this resource new sticker because this resource is really just going to be a timer for how often our messages should be shown so the first step is to have this new sticker yield one of itself so just have it yield one new sticker and then we add an if statement that checks if the amount of our new sticker resource is a multiple of 10. We are gonna initialize some kind of local variable. In this case, let's call it message and have it equal to some random number 
between one and you know n which is our number of messages in my case i want to have 10 messages in my game and i just realized i forgot to put this inside an on tick effect which is my bad so just make sure to add it inside an on tick effect and let's just to be sure add two preemptive ends since we have an if statement here and one end to close the effect block now the next step is actually really easy you just add a bunch of if statements that check all the possible values of this message variable so if message is for example equal to one right that's one possible value we first of all clear the log just in case there was any kind of message in it already and then we log you know message one and now we just add a bunch of else ifs that do the same thing except for all the other possible values so if message is equal to two we clear the log again and then log message two and you just repeat this until you've exhausted all the possible values of this message variable which is really just a random number from 1 to 10 in my case so i'm gonna repeat this 10 times all right and now i have fully implemented all of the possible messages that my new sticker can show now don't worry i didn't actually do anything out of the ordinary i merely just checked all the possible values of the message variable and then logged out some kind of message so really that's all you have to do as well just repeat this process for how many messages you want and of course at the end of the process don't forget to add an end close this massive if statement block and also don't forget that this is really just surface level you could accompany plenty of other variables to this as well for example if you wanted to show some kind of message if you have over one trillion coins you could once again do that using if statements that check if you have earned over one trillion coins now after we update our code we can see that our new sticker is actually showing up some news which is really cool and it also shows a new piece of news every 10 seconds as you can see now we could leave it like this and it's practically already finished however there are a few more details that i'd like to add the first one is that the text is actually anchored on the bottom of the log so let's quickly change that through css and let's also make this new sticker resource hidden so first let's add the always hidden property to our new sticker next up let's move up to our css section and let's target the inner log so hashtag log inner and let's give it a vertical align of top. okay and now the text inside of our new sticker is anchored at the top instead of the bottom now i promise we're almost finished there's just one more thing i need to show you and that is that you can apply css classes to log the messages which is really really cool so i'm just going to use that to style the text here since at the moment it's pretty much unreadable but also pretty darn ugly so in order to style our logged messages let's first create a new css class and let's have this class be named news header right so this is going to be for the headers of our news messages and we're going to give the header a font size of 20 pixels a font to weight of bold and we're also gonna give the header a text shadow with an x offset of two pixels a y offset of two pixels and a blur of five pixels and a color of black now of course you can also read more about all of these properties on the website that i have mentioned previously next up let's create a class for the content of the news message which will just have a font size of 16 pixels just to make it a bit more readable. And now the way we apply these two newly created classes into our log messages is we just scroll all the way back down here and we just add parentheses next to the log and the name of our class like so. So let's have this first message be the header. Let's have the second message be the content. And let's just repeat this process for each one of our messages. All right, so I've added these two classes to each one of my messages and let's see how they look now. Hopefully they look pretty good. And with that, I think that our new sticker now looks pretty much perfect and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. And with that said, that marks the end of this episode. Thank you so, so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a thing or two or even three and this episode has been a bit of a longer one since there was a lot to cover with both at game maker code and css code however if you got this far that means you hopefully enjoyed the video and i would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe and if you have any suggestions for a future tutorial feel free to comment your idea in the comments i read every single one and if you really enjoy what i do here feel free to check out my patreon which is linked in the description of course though that's completely optional so once again thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one